do not adjust your TV or your speakers. It's going to be an interesting one today, so let's get on with it. Roll titles! So you might notice that this video sounds and indeed looks a bit different than normal. And that is because I'm coming to you through a different medium. I'm coming to you via Mini DV, which was a recording format that was around in the 2000s. Now, as you can see, I'm in a sort of four by three ratioed box and Oh, I don't know how it sounds. I don't have a microphone on. I'm using the microphone on the camera. Um, and you might be wondering why I'm doing this. Well, I think rather than sit in this slightly weird format, we should go over to the desk and we'll talk about everything. That feels much better. I've got a full wide screen to work with now. Okay, so why are we looking at Mini DV? Well, back in 2003, I was about to become a father for the first time, and I wanted to document my beautiful baby in the best possible quality that I could. And I decided to buy a camcorder. Now, I wanted to get the best camcorder I could afford, and around about that time, the mini DV format was around. So before then, family sort of grade camcorders were analog affairs and they were great, but obviously they were at a fairly low VHS resolution. Now the mini DV format meant digital video, so they could record digitally. And I think the resolution of them was something like 720 pixels by 520 pixels, something like that. It wasn't HD as we know it, but it was certainly a step in the right direction. And I basically spent a lot of money on this. And this is the Panasonic NVGS1 Mini DV camcorder. And uh, yeah, it was, it was amazing for its time. It was so small and compact and uh, yeah, had a look, a flip out screen, not only a flip out screen, a flip out screen you could turn around and record yourself with. Madness! Had a display with 800,000 pixels. Whoa! Uh, it sort of had the traditional viewfinder there and the tape went in the side there. Actually, let's get the tape out for you. Love this old mechanism. <laughs> Always makes me jump. It's so aggressive. And there we go. That is a mini DV tape and they could record up to 60 minutes or 90 minutes on long play. And then you just push that. Ooh. It's the strap. I thought, Jesus, the tape's disintegrating. But no, it's just the strap. So uh, yeah, I basically had this and used it from 2003 right up to about 2009-ish. It served me really well. Um, now, it wasn't actually this specific one that I owned. The one that I had, I think sort of in between divorce and moving house and all that stuff, I lost the camcorder. But I kept the tapes. I actually went back a few months ago and found my old YouTube channel. I'll put a link to it in the description. It's absolutely terrible. And on there were some videos that I'd filmed using this camera or my version of this camera. And I thought, oh, there's some really good old theme park footage that I had. I captured theme parks back in the early 2000s and because I didn't really understand editing or resolution or anything like that, the quality of the content is, well, shit. 
I did think that I might try and download the footage from my old YouTube channel and process it and edit it. But the problem is because the quality is so low, I think it's not even at the same resolution that comes out of the camera. It's a lot lower. This doesn't have any kind of optical stabilization. So shots were wonky as hell. Even if you weren't shaking, they just, it was just hard to get a good sort of moving shot. So yeah, there's, there's so much new technology that can help improve footage out of these cameras now, but you need the, to go back to the source really. So I'm gonna go back to those original tapes and get them onto the computer. And then in, a, in future videos, I'm going to do some sort of retrospective looks at some of the UK theme parks with the footage that I found. How do you get footage off this camera? Now it's a digital tape, so it's not like older camcorders where you could get like an adapter to put them through a VHS player. You can't do that because it's digital. So there are some analog outputs that you could plug it into a uh, analog capture card that will convert the analog signal out of here into digital on the computer. Now that is fine, you don't really want to take the digital signal, convert it into analog, and then convert it back into digital. That adds an extra step, and that adds an extra sort of margin for error and a possible loss of quality. What we've got under here are some additional ports. We've got an Edit E mini port. I don't know what that is. We've got a digital still picture port. I don't know what that is but we've also got a DV port. Now that I do know, and that is called a Firewire port. And basically this has a Firewire port. Now it was almost like a sort of precursor to fast USB transfer. USB was around at the time, sort of, it was in its infancy, but it couldn't transfer data very quickly. Firewire was a sort of cable specification that Apple used back a lot in those days for transferring data, and it was very, very quick. And so lots of Apple computers at the time came with Firewire connectors, and actually PCs could come with Firewire connectors as well. Now, most modern PCs don't come with it because it is a slightly defunct system now. So if you want to add a Firewire into your computer, you need to get one of these. Now this is a Firewire PCIe adapter card that I got from Amazon. Um, now, I won't actually go through the whole process of how you install a PCIe card into your computer um, because I've covered that before in a previous video, which I'll link to up there. But actually what I'll do is I'll quickly install it in front of your eyes and give a shout out to all those awesome channel members. So first up, we've got those Kip fans who are no-name added, Matt Love is JRC Electrical for the Burbs and Mark C. And then you've got to get up early to defeat these early birds. They are the Kip early birds. And they're Roberta Gurren, Dean Ball, Gary Bannon, the Coda, Sean at Cablesmith Electrical, Wayne at A1 Electrical Services, and the wonderful Tim Salt. Then I love these people and they love me too. It is the Kip lovers and they are Richard at R Blaster, Bella Webster, Lawrence, Adventure Rachel, and Stair Sticks Mother Flipping Fix. That's not his actual name, I just added that. Sorry, Stairs. And then we've got the gorgeous, wonderful Kip Nutter, Becky Becky Booba. Thank you so much, Becky. It's good to have you with us. And then we've got the mental, the Kip mental, David Elphick. Thank you so much for your continued support, David. You gorgeous man. So my computer is now equipped with a Firewire card with uh, Firewire ports and I've got this lovely cable which has got the small Firewire connector on this end and a large Firewire connector on that end. And basically that means that I can transfer the data from this camcorder digitally from the tapes onto the computer. Now there is a bit of a worry. So although the recordings are digital, they are actually saved on magnetic tapes. So that is like a standard VHS tape or cassette tape. Now, the problem is with magnetic media like this is it degrades over time. And this is the bit I'm really scared about because I've got all these mini DV tapes 
and they've been kept in sort of house temperatures, they've not been out in the shed or anything like that. And so all these tapes that I've kept hold of for prosperity might just contain nothing or pixelated mess. So this is a bit of a gamble and I'm actually scared because I think, although I've not played back these tapes in years, it's kind of been a comfort knowing that they're there and if I wanted to, I can go back to them. Now, when I do the transfer on the computer in a Mo, I might have to edit slash filter what I can show you. That doesn't mean there's anything dodgy on these tapes, nothing like that at all. It's just obviously there are a lot of images from the past and there are some great memories on there, but there are also some things that I don't really want to remember, if I'm gonna be completely honest with you. Yeah, we'll see how that section of the video all works because I'm doing this as live. I've not made a bit on the computer already. We're going to literally put one of these tapes in there and get it onto the computer. Because I think the process of actually getting it onto the computer is quite interesting. Well, I think so anyway. Okay, so this one just says it's Thorpe Park. It is. That is Thought Park in 2004. You can't really see because this display is terrible, but it's working. It's actually working. So I guess what we need to do now is plug the DV cable in to here and into the computer and then fire up Premiere Pro, which is what I use to grab the footage off the camera and we'll go from there. It's exciting. Okay, so I've got the camcorder plugged in to the computer using the Firewire cable and I've got Premiere Pro open and that is what you can see on the screen. I actually used Premiere Pro back in the day when I've made the videos originally and basically if you just go into a project on Premiere Pro, go into File and then Capture, you get this window up. So uh, I put the tape name as Thought Park 2004 uh, we'll call it Thorpe Park Clips. And we'll make it so it detects scene. So basically, every time I stopped and started the camcorder, that will make it a separate file. There's, so there's basically lots of files of different clips rather than one big file that I then have to chop up because that's just a ball ache. So what I'll do is I'll set it to capture the entire tape and hopefully if I press tape it will just start pulling the footage off the camera, I think. Okay, oh, camera's making noise. There we go, we've got a bit of Nemesis Inferno from 2004 flying around wow okay yeah so we've got some tidal wave there as well awesome that's so cool so yeah this is an entirely digital to digital transfer so this will get the stuff off the tape in the best possible quality. It doesn't look perfect, because obviously it's an old recording. This is the best way to get it off the camera. It does look a little bit smudgy. Yep, I had a dirty lens that day. <laughs> Never mind. But oh my God, that is mad. That is absolutely mad, seeing that footage. What an amazing looking day that was. Wow. Now something I've noticed on the videos that I recorded back in the day is the fact that they're in widescreen. Now the thing is, they aren't actually in widescreen. Now I remember the camera had a menu in the settings where you could set it to record in widescreen. And back in 2003, widescreen wasn't really much of a thing, but it was coming in and it was like the new thing that was going to be sort of everyone would have widescreen TV which they now do. So I thought, well, I need to record in widescreen because that obviously is the future. 
Now the thing is, the camcorder does widescreen in a slightly cheeky way. And instead of actually being filmed in widescreen, it takes the four by three picture and just adds some black bars to the top and bottom of it. So it's not actually true widescreen. Everything off the camera is like in widescreen, but it's got these black bars at the top and bottom of it. So what I'm gonna do is basically I'm just gonna let it run its course and save all the footage. And then what I'll do is I'll take the files that it generated and just back those up and just and just keep those entirely safe um, because I just want to have you know backups exactly as they were from the camera before I start messing around with them. Now I think when I say I'm going to mess around with them, I think as well as edit them into some retro videos, I think I'm going to try and use a bit of new technology to improve them. So we'll look at doing some stuff like some AI upscaling so we can maybe bring this up to 4K. Um, we might be able to do some stuff to maybe tweak the stabilization. So it's very wonky footage. You know, as I said, there was no optical image stabilization on this camera. So the slightest shake, it's on film. But there are ways of improving that nowadays in Premiere Pro. So we can have a little look at that. So I'll tell you what, let's play in now some of the footage that I've just got off the camera and see how it looks. It's amazing. It's so cool. Because I, I, I can't really remember this day. It almost feels like I had like a random day there and went and filmed, which I didn't do all that much back then. Because I don't think I had an annual pass. I don't know if annual passes were even a thing. So you obviously had to pay to go. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to do a separate video on the sort of restoration and getting the clips sort of to be looking a bit fresher. I mean, there's obviously, there's obviously a lot of charm in these shaky, badly colored, funny old clips, but yeah, it'd be nice to sort of give them a bit of a, bit of pizzazz. But also, as I said, I'm gonna keep them exactly as they are as well just for posterity and you know who knows in the future there might be an even better way of restoring them or anything like that but at least now I know that I can get them off the magnetic tapes I'll keep the tape still but I know that even if they degrade over time I've still got some digital backups which I think is the most important thing. So please do ensure you subscribe to the channel and we'll do some sort of restoration video updates. Um, if you've got any tips or anything like that, that would be really helpful. I've, I've done some bits and bobs and played around with settings and stuff before, but if you've got any ideas on how best to do it, then please do drop it in the comments. But yeah, in future, there's going to be a few retrospective look backs at theme parks in the UK coming up on the channel so please make sure you hit that subscribe button anyway i think that is it from me i hope you've enjoyed this slightly different video it's been a trip down memory lane and i've got like another 10 or 20 tapes to 
go through and uh, see what's on them. So that'll be fun, hopefully. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, but for now, it's game over.